Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a Torgar second right combo deck. So the combo is pretty straightforward. We've got Torgar Famine Incarnate as an 8 mana 7 6 legendary avatar, and as an additional cost to cast Torgar, we can sacrifice any number of creatures. So Torgar costs 2 generic mana less to cast for each creature we sacrificed this way. And then when Torgar enters the battlefield, up to one target player's life total becomes half of their starting life total rounded down. In other words, we can put someone's life total to 10. So if we sacrifice three creatures, we can play Torgar for just double black and put the opponent's life total to 10. And then we've got second right, which for four mana, if target player has exactly 10 life, it deals 10 damage to that player. So if we have a total of six mana and three creatures to sacrifice, we can one hit KO the opponent from any starting life total. And then another important piece of the puzzle is Luka Coppercoat Outcast, which can help us find Torgar with the minus 2 ability if we exile one of our 2 drops, since we don't have any creatures we can hit besides Torgar to put the opponent's life total to 10. The plus 1 ability can also help us find more creatures, including Torgar and plenty of other creatures that can help us draw more cards. And then every now and then we can also win the game with the minus 7 ability, where each creature we control deals damage equal to its power to each opponent. So if we don't find a copy of second right, we can maybe just win the game with the minus 7, especially if we have a Torgar in play adding 7 power. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we've got plenty of creatures that help us draw cards to help us find all these combo pieces, and that we can then sacrifice to discount Torgar's mana cost. So we've got the full playset of Elvish Visionary as a 1-1 that draws a card when it enters the battlefield, as well as Dusk Legion Zealot, which does the same at the cost of 1 life, and two copies of Rick's Mighty Reveler, which when it enters the battlefield lets us discard a card and then draw a card, and we can also spectacle it for 4 mana, discarding our hand, drawing 3 cards. Then we've got some mana ramp with Elanor Elves at 1 mana and the full playset of Paradise Druid at 2. So that does allow us to potentially win the game on turn 4 if we have the perfect draw and we don't face any interaction. We can go turn 1 Elanor Elves, turn 2 another mana creature, turn 3 play Luka minus getting Torgar, and then turn 4 we can play second right to win the game. So that's the fastest our deck is capable of winning. And then we also have some disruption in the form of Brain Maggots as a 2 mana 1 1 that when it enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals their hands and we choose a non land card from it. So we can take both creatures and non creatures and exile that card until Brain Maggot leaves the battlefield. And then once we're ready to combo, we can still sacrifice the Brain Maggots and uh, get a Torgar in play. And we don't really mind if the opponent gets their card back when they're dead. And another nice one in the deck is Honor the God Pharaoh. For 3 mana and the additional cost of discarding a card, we get to draw 2 and amass 1, making a 1-1 one, one zombie army token if we don't have one already, otherwise we put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the existing zombie army token, so it just helps us make more creatures for Torgar, and then the uh, looting effect is very useful. If we draw multiple copies of second right, we can easily discard one of them, or maybe we find additional copies of Torgar we don't need, or just discard some lands in the late game and help us draw towards the missing combo pieces. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much our entire deck. Then we've got our second right, Luka and Torgar. And then a mana base, we've got 10 untapped green sources with 2 forests, 4 overgrown tomb and 4 stomping ground for the turn 1 elves. And then plenty of red mana to help us cast Luka, which is double red. Of course, Paradise Root can help there as well. So we've got uh, 4 Blood Crypt to round out all the shock lands. And then 4 Dragon Skull Summit, which comes into play untapped if we control a swamp or mountain. And Rootbound Crag, which comes into play untapped if we control a mountain or forest. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and we've got a fine opening hand. Some uh, sacrifice fodder into Luka. We're missing second rights to really combo off, but can maybe just win the game with Luka instead. Facing some sort of Sultai ramp deck. So this turn we'll just play Visionary and play a land tapped. Alright, there's second right, so our hand is shaping up nicely. We've got all the combo pieces we need. So this turn we can double two drop. Mm, 
Now I won't be able to one-hit kill my opponent next turn yet, but I can just play Luka. I could decide to wait on minusing until the turn after. Alright, opponent had a, a Ritual of Soot to wipe the board, sadly. That's alright. Um, so this turn I could honor discarding second right. We'll give away our game plan by discarding it, but still seems better than playing Zelt. Although I do have to keep in mind that um, I can sacrifice the token to get Torgar. So maybe I'm better off playing Zealot. That way I just need to hit a land drop in two draw steps. Alright, Elf works too. So next turn we can play Luka. And I could minus right away to get Torgar, although that does give the opponent the opportunity to maybe play a Shockland untapped. Although they don't know about the uh, second right game plan yet, necessarily. So let's see if this resolves. It does. So I'm tempted to just uh, plus this turn. Alright, Bray Maggot, some nice disruption too. So next turn we can play it extra safe by going Brain Maggot, take a look at the opponent's hand, and then minus get Torgar, and then cast second right. Ooh, Emergent Ultimatum. Let's see what the opponent gets. Plain White Celebration, Liliana Omniscient. So if I give them Celebration and Liliana, they can basically ultimate Liliana on the spot. So that can't happen. Uh, do I care about giving them Liliana? Not really. So I can give Omniscience Liliana or Plain White Omniscience, basically. Well, I guess both Plain White and Liliana I don't really care about individually. It's just when giving them together that it's a problem. I guess I'll give them uh, Plain White Omniscience and shuffle Liliana back. Sure. Now if they have some more powerful cards in hand, we could be in trouble with this Omniscience. They had another ultimatum, makes sense. Liliana, Acquisition and Nissa. Well, I guess uh, that's fine. They can have their Liliana and their Nissa. Opponent does get to draw two cards, so they could still keep comboing off with Omniscience. Uh-oh, they found Tamiyo. She can get back Plain White. At least Ultimatum exiles itself, so they couldn't get that back. They can proliferate, but they've already used Liliana, so they can't ultimate Liliana anymore. Ultimating Nissa's fine. Don't care if Luka takes three. Alright, let's play Brain Maggot to check things out first. Pwn just holding two lanes. Alright, that should do it. Minus two, sag the Brain Maggot. Bam! Our opponent got to combo off, but they failed to kill me on the spot. But uh, we didn't give them a second chance. On to the next one. We're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Paradise Druid can fix for black mana. And then a Luka, which we can maybe play on turn 4.
would like to draw another black source so we can double spell. Yeah, I think I want to go have a look here with Bray Maggots. Vraska and Oath of Kaya could both kill my Brain Maggots. Let's take the Vraska. And just get my Planeswalker in play this turn. Now I don't want to minus here to get Torgar, because my opponent can gain a ton of life with the Interplanar Beacon and the Vraska. So I'm not going to be able to keep them at 10 life reliably. Now I will lose my black mana once they minus some Paradise Druids. Go ahead. It seems fortune favors you. So plus first. If I can't use it as a weapon, it's useless. So we could find a right next turn and potentially win. We've got Honor to God Pharaoh to maybe help us find it. Extinction events deals with all the elves. Its loss will serve us. Sacrifices oath. And there's Torgar, not too useful. So I'm not going to be able to win this turn, so might as well start by plussing. Well, I did exile a second right here. Still three in the deck. Start with honor, discarding... Maybe a zealot. And then I want to make use of the black mana so I can Bray Maggot or play another Zealot here. Let's have a look. Although I guess Vraska could minus, but I can attack Vraska, so that's fine. Another Extinction Event, Garnish Tyrant, Tamiya, Tezzeret. It's gotta be the Extinction Event. So they kind minus three here. And I've got another shot at uh, assembling the combo next turn. Oath of the Fairy, interesting. So it's some sort of Super Friends deck. Everyone is expendable. They can plus and then minus. Get back extinction events. So, can I kill my opponents? I can play Torgar, put them to 10, and then ultimate Luka, but that's not going to be quite enough. I need 3 power in addition to Torgar, which I'm not going to have if I sacrifice some creatures here. Yeah, I'm going to be a little. Short. I can put them to two life, which is not quite enough. So this turn probably starts with playing a creature here over honor, because if I find second ride, I could win. Whereas if I honor, I might be one mana short. All right, that should do it. Sweet. On to the next one. Ah, 
All right, we're on the play with uh, pretty decent hands. Missing the second right, but uh, I've got a nice selection of card draw and looting abilities. Facing Temple of Deceit. Generally speaking, this deck prefers to play against control and slower decks as opposed to aggro decks, which we're pretty weak against. Especially tap out control decks. Counterspell heavy decks can be a little tougher because they can just keep up a counterspell for some of our key combo pieces and use sweepers to deal with our small creatures. Could also be a reanimator deck, who knows. Um, so I could honor this turn. I could go Zealot, play Tapland. Not sure yet what we're facing. If we are facing a more controlling deck with counter spells, I'll probably want to keep both Torgar and Luka in hand, so I don't want to discard them to honor yet. Crime the Carnarium, that's fine. So we'll just double two drop. And then I could discard honor to the reveler. Or I can just honor this turn since I don't really need Paradise Druid to cast Luka next turn. And keep Reveler for more draw. Alright, so now we can discard the second Torgar pretty easily. Hopefully resolve our Planeswalker. Thief of Sanity. Could be annoying. Ooh, there's our second right, so... I sadly don't have a 2-drop in play, so I won't be able to minus Luka and win next turn, but uh, I can just play Luka and start plussing. This could be a Spell Pierce. I think they might have a dive down in hand to protect Thief instead. Alright, so we're not in a bad spot if they can't kill Luka here. It's a Disfigure instead. Fair enough. And even if they kill Luka, we still have... Torgar in hand to potentially combo with. It's just gonna be a bit more difficult. Thief goes face. Gotta watch out that they don't find the second right themselves to kill me with. Another discovery. So I could technically win if I draw lands, and they don't interact. Alright, sadly Murder Strider takes out Luka. Not sure if I need to discard the right or... Torgar to this Reveler, so I guess I'll Bray Maggot first, which can maybe help inform my decision. Ashok, Ritual of Soot, Cast Down. I guess I want to take the Ashok. So they don't necessarily know about second right yet. Not sure what I'm supposed to discard. I'll ditch uh, second right. So they might attack and then ritual of suits. Or they might just cast down to unlock Ashiok. 
I'm hoping they don't Ritual of Soot so I can potentially uh, kill them next turn. Plays another Thief. Alright, and a Paradise Root. Sweet, I'm glad they decided to tap out. Sacrifice three creatures. One, two, three. Sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a reasonable opening hand. Play this uh, tapped for now since don't have a Swamp or Mountain yet. Turn to Paradise Roots and then we can double spell on turn three. Alright, opponent's playing the treasure hunt deck. Alright, so we need to find a second right, or maybe just try and get Torgar and play as soon as possible and attack them with it. So this turn I can go Visionary plus Zealots. Luka. Alright. So I guess my summit still comes into play tapped, so I wouldn't be able to play Luka necessarily. Treasure Hunt finds another Treasure Hunt. So this is the version playing Zenith Flare to kill us. Good thing that they haven't found a Zenith Flare yet, since Otherwise, it could have uh, probably killed us next turn. Alright, so what's the play here? Paradise Root can make double black. Can play Torgar, sacking three creatures. So I guess the play is play a Ruffler, discarding, say, Paradise Roots. And then drawing overgrown two means I can play elves first. Play Torgar sacking three creatures. Because if I had drawn second right, then I didn't want to attack my opponent after playing Torgar, but now I do. So they're at 9, so next turn we should have lethal. Treasure hunt finds Zenith Flare. But uh, yeah, it's not gonna do it. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with uh, reasonable hands. Bray Maggot for disruption, honor to find second right, hopefully. All right, opponent probably playing a reanimator deck. So let's take the chart, of course. So they don't have a way of putting Ulamog in the graveyard right away. And this turn... I don't actually have anything I want to actively discard with Honor, so I think I'll play Visionary. They did find Unburial Rites, so now they just need to put a big creature in the graveyard to reanimate on turn 4. 
Discovery can definitely help them find one. I wonder if they have another reanimation target besides Ulamog now that Agent of Treachery is banned in Historic. Or suspended, I should say. So what to do this turn? Playing Paradise Roots guarantees I can play Luka next turn. Although Honor finding a Lance could do it as well. And if I find a second right, I guess I would still like the extra mana from Paradise Roots. Now we could also face a Sweeper here. So maybe that was a reason to play Honor, to just hit land 5 instead. It's gonna be Charter Course instead, can discard Ulamog, so next turn they can reanimate it. So we've got a uh, couple turns here to win the game before Ulamog mills us. So do I go digging with Honor? I can Honor twice. It's probably worth it. And then do I discard Torgar? Do I discard Luka? Do I discard Lands? I think I honor discarding Luka here. Assuming I need to find second rights to win the game. Torgar can be a little easier to play here for two mana. And then we'll honor again, discarding Tomb. Right, no second right yet. But I've got a couple of redraws with Visionary and Zealot. Bond of Revival, so they can attack with the Hasty Ulamog. Let's see how many rights they uh, exiled here. One, two, so there's still two left in the deck. I can take 10 pretty easily. Although I guess that means a sweeper next turn kills all my creatures and I take 10 and die. Alright, gonna need to find some action. More Torgars. So if they attack, I'll have one card left in the deck. Spark Double makes another Ulamog, they don't attack. So they're gearing up for next turn. They have two blockers, block, block, take three, four, five, six, seven, down to four. So it's not quite lethal here. And next turn I'm dead to double Ulamog attack. Yeah, I don't think there's much I can do. In hindsight, discarding... Look how over Torgar didn't work out since we didn't end up drawing more action and the uh, mana wasn't really a constraint. Is there anything I can do? I mean my opponent just attacks with both next turn and exiles my entire library. Hope they don't block I guess. Our opponent blocked. So I think we're dead. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Couple mana creatures and some card draw.
Alright, so green-white token stack. So I could have a look with Brain Maggots. I think I'll give them one more turn to play some token makers, and then next turn we can maybe get the payoff card. Also, if they go another migration into Venerated Loxodon, I could regret it. I think I wait. Just uh, play another Paradise Roots. Develop my mana. Take two. Alright, let's have a look. Could be a race the alarm end of turn here. Pledge of Unity. Another pledge in hand and Mirari's Wake. I think I take the other pledge. And this turn I can uh, play Reveler discarding land probably. Keep Paradise Root on defense to trade for a token. Maybe I'm only supposed to block one token in case they drew another pledge here, instead of trading for both. Let's keep drawing cards. There's Luka to get Torgar. So just missing second right. And there's Torgar himself. Not gonna attack in case of a Razy Alarm. So they do get to play Mirari Swake potentially, but they're missing land 5. So I would like to Brain Maggot them again. And then I can honor discarding Torgar perhaps. Double Mirari Swake and Camaraderie. Guess I'll take the camaraderie since Wake is kind of redundant. Could be correct to discard Luka instead of Torgar since I can more easily play Torgar and second right in the same turn. But if we don't find second right right away, then Luka can provide more of an advantage over the course of a few turns. We'll stay back. Alright, so I can honor discarding Luka and we're likely drawing a land or something useful. So I can still play Luka afterwards or I can just play Luka and Plus, which is also fine. I did Exile right as it turns out and didn't find any creatures, so not the best plus one activation, but uh, that's okay. Still have three rights in the deck. I'm definitely willing to trade off for Amara at the very least. Alright, so let's start with Honor. And that should do it. Minus on a 2-drop. Put the opponent to 10. Now, Pledge doesn't... I guess Pledge does gain life at instant speed, so I should wait until they tap out to cast right here. Otherwise, they could respond with a life gain spell. So I'm hoping they tap out for Mirari's Wake. I guess they could attack with a soldier token here. Alright, so now in response they won't be able to pledge me. 
All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with uh, reasonable hands. Paradise Road to ramp into Luka. Hopefully find more creatures that draw cards like Elvish Visionary to find our Sacnerites. Opponent also with Visionary, so this might be an Elf deck. We haven't had to use Torgar on ourselves yet to put us to 10. This could be one of those games where we have to do that just to buy ourselves an extra turn. For now, just uh, Paradise Root plus Visionary. So our deck is humming along nicely. No attacks, and there's a second right. Do we have the kill? I think we do. Well, that was fast. Bam. Turn for kill, not in the way I described in the introduction, but this works as well. On to the next one. We are on the draw with a great hand. Both our combo pieces, turn one elf, zealot and honor for card draw. This is probably a gross spiral. I guess I could honor discarding honor, since I just want to hit my land drops here. Could also ditch Luka, which we don't really need, but I might end up short on creatures for Torgar. And Luka can be easier to set up sometimes. It's gonna be an Omen of the Sea. Next turn, I guess I don't have double black, so I can double Zealots. That works out fine. Now I can just replay Elf, play Zealot and kill the Fairy. Or play Brain Maggots. I suppose that's how it was meant to happen. Aha, so this is the Flood of Tears Omniscience combo deck. They have one permanent in play at the moment. Uh, Tamiyo is probably the more annoying card here. That does leave them with all the combo pieces. But once time you're in play, I guess Bray Maggot exiles and doesn't discard, so I can still play future Bray Maggots, but time you just helps them find so many combo pieces and has so much loyalty that it's difficult to take out. Narset's also annoying, but we can just attack Narset before drawing cards. But yeah, for opponent can get four permanents in play and then cast Flood of Tears. They can put an Omniscience in play. But they also need Taimyo to go infinite with Flood of Tears. With Taimyo returning Flood of Tears from the graveyard each time. Now my opponent is also at 16, so I could potentially just kill them with the second right by attacking two times here. Let's see, is there any chance my opponent can combo me next turn? They only have 5 mana, so if they play a land they can Flood of Tears, but they needed to get another permanent in play. So I should be safe to just attack their life total. I guess I could cast Flood of Tears without uh, putting Omniscience in play, just to kind of reset the board. So maybe I should still attack Narset here. 
Yeah, because if they Flood of Tears, bounce all my stuff, then it's going to take a while to get them to 10 for second right. Alright, let's just go after Narset. And then if I play Paradise Druid and draw land, I can kill them next turn. Also, if they end up casting Flood of Tears, I might have preferred playing a Zealot to maybe draw into a land. Alright, so they did cast Flood of Tears. Probably just want to develop my mana again. Yeah, missing land drops here definitely hurts. So for the opponent, it's a race to four permanents in play. For us, it's a race to enough mana to combo kill our opponent, or maybe get them to 10 and then second right to win the game. Teferi's gonna slow us down again. So they have three permanents in play and three, six, seven mana, could be eight. So if they have another 2 mana, Omen of the Sea or Wolf of Haven, they could kill me next turn if I don't take out the Fairy. I mean, I guess I still kill them with double elf here. If they don't bounce my stuff again. Because I'll have 6 mana and 3 creatures, including the double black. Although they could go time you minus get the ferry and bounce my paradise druids. They're gonna plus instead. Naming Shatter the Sky. Okay. Dodge that bullet. So I just need them to tap out and not bounce any of my creatures. Gift, that doesn't matter. Alright, I think we got it. So this makes black, black, green, green. Play Torgar for two mana, sacking three creatures. Let's see. Yeah, Tamiyo doesn't interfere with me sacking creatures. Just wanted to double check. Bam. Even with just three lands in play, we still got there. So our second right combo deck does seem very janky at first. But it's actually surprisingly decent. Doesn't want to be facing any hyper-aggressive decks, like Monored especially with Goblin Chain Whirler. That's probably the last card we want to face with this deck, since it wipes our board as well as applies a lot of pressure. So we don't have time to assemble the combo. But that's maybe one of the matchups where we end up using Torgar on ourselves to maybe gain a bit of life. Although it might still not be enough to win the game. But overall, definitely a fun, janky, historic deck that is capable of winning some games. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.